Hello and good morning. Welcome to watch the 22nd episode of Knitting with Nola podcast. Today is Saturday, way too early on Saturday morning, uh, 29th, 29th of uh, September 2018 and my name is Nola. I'm coming to you from southern Finland where it has had the first proper night frost last night. I'm facing, waiting for my car to uh, warm up a bit in the lovely sunshine we are expecting for the day. As I said, it's ridiculously early. It's probably uh, it's not even 9 o'clock just yet. I'm going to Turku today for a knitting meetup and I will be leaving in uh, about two hours time. So I thought I'd get the uh, recording and editing done by that so that I can then just leave the computer to upload it to the YouTube. Uh, I have two nearly finished objects. I have a huge pile of whips. I have some spinning. I have purchased some yarn and uh, there are a few words about the Tin Can Knits Cow and then I have three more books. I actually have additional two more books on the way. And the new Linen magazine has come out yesterday, and I'm expecting to buy it today. My first nearly finished object is for my tin can, it's Cal. It is the uh, snowflake sweater that I made for my goddaughter. Uh, I love the lace part, and I actually love the con contrast that the colors now have. Um, we dyed these yarns together with my goddaughter when they visited. I then had to re-dye this uh, darker yarn because um, it just wasn't enough contrast. I still need to weave in the ends. I still need to do some uh, few stitches here and there. I need to put in the buttons, but other than that, I am finished. I did the uh, cuffs for the... Um, I have a, a three quarters sleeves and they had uh, very nice cuffs for adults and I just thought well okay I'll need the sleeve bit a bit longer than what it uh, said in the adult version and then I just make the cuff a bit shorter so that she will still have the three quarters length of sleeves but it has this lovely detail there will be buttons here as well and it's going to be her birthday present she has a birthday in october so um i will be shipping it to her by then there is a, f a fair chance that i'll meet her meet her in a few weeks time because they are coming to finland and i might just drive drive there to meet them but yeah i'm very happy with this this was the Tin Can Knits um, Snowflake. Yeah, I'm not still properly awake. Uh, Snowflake from the Great White North book. And as I said, I'm running a cowl for Tin Can Knits patterns, uh, plus hearts on my sleeve patterns in my uh, Ravelry group. And that will also include the new Strange Brew uh, patterns that come out on Thursday. I used here the Premium Perfect Sock Yarn. Uh, I purchased this yarn from the Nappia Nauha in Kuopio when I was there during the summer holidays. This is a Sport DK weight yarn, 75-25 uh, wool and volume it. And it's recommended 3, and three, three to 3.5 three and millimeter needles. 150 grams, 375 meters. That'll make then uh, 100 and 175. Don't know. 125. Yeah, that makes more sense. 125 meters per um, per 50 grams. So it's about a DK DK sports weight yarn. And I wasn't actually even making a 
gauge watch, but I did me uh, measure the gauge after I had clocked it, and it was spot on. Don't mind. My another nearly finished object is also from a card daughter. It is a beanie. It's sort of like I will put here uh, a tingle ball so that it'll make a noise every time. It's maybe more of sort of a slouchy beanie. I even thought there is um, one of uh, one of the Christmas advent calendar TV shows that is placed on the Santa's Santa's workshop. So a lot of those uh, Tontons that work there, Santa's helpers that work there, elves I think they are called actually in English. Uh, they use the beanies, slouchy beanies like this, so sort of like just pre-advent, pre-Christmas time, fun. Uh, this is yarn that I did dye myself as well, and it is Sirdar Gorgeous Ultra Super Chunky. 150 grams, 50 meters. 51-49 wool acrylic combination. Um, it took 100 grams, maybe? It is big enough that it'll fit me, but it doesn't have the slouchy feeling then. So uh, I'm hopeful that it'll be very nice slouchy beanie for her. So, those are my two nearly finished objects. I'm just wondering if I would show the spinning first or would I go with the uh, lip spoil? <laughs> it's huge, the lip spoil. All seven of them. And not even that many of them are being started recently. Few are, but not all. So the first one is the Stripescape Shawl by Stephen West. I'm on section 3, working on the second garter, garter uh, stitch section. I have done so far only one. And... Uh, I have another one to go. I am about half way through through this section. Uh, this has been neglected lately uh, because I'm not sure if I like this brioche section here. I love both of these colors. I like the red one that is uh, from Ike, Ike Yarns. I think it was called Odd Snowflake, so it's special snowflake, so it's not one of her repeatable, repeatable uh, colorways, but I love it. And the turquoise one is Malabrico, reflecting pool. But I'm not sure if these two actually work out. Very nicely, you know. Get out of that, please. But you're supposed to. Ah, that's the problem. It's supposed to be that way. Right. Um, I'm not sure if these two work out properly with these three. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to frog that. That's for sure. Because I know that when it's finished, I will wear it anyway, because I love all the other colors. But it's sort of like, yeah, I don't know what to think about it. My other colors, uh, so I have the A color, uh, The Road So Far by Ike. And this is uh, Superwash, Merino, Nylon and Stellina. Then I have the light purple one. That is Ginger Twist Studios, Ginger's Handy Dyed Sheepish Sock, 8020's uh, Blue Face Lace to Nylon. 
in colorway My Little Pony. Uh, well, I did present these two yarns already. And then the newest addition that I have added, the color C, is then Ginger Tree Studios Ginger Hand Dyes Sheepish Sock color Bermuda. But I can't wait for this to be finished. It's going to be so gorgeous. The shawl, I'm still not sure about the color. But um, yeah, it will be finished eventually when I'm done a lot of other knitting that comes with the time of the year. And because I sort of signed up for the uh, mystery call that starts next Friday. So, uh, yeah. The thing is, I have misplaced my short uh, uh, Knit Pro 375 tips. So these are the only 375 tips I have at the moment. I have no idea where I put some short ones. I might buy new ones today. Uh, so uh, I just all the time I'm wondering where are they and then I just grab the tips from this so there is a risk that eventually this will be with our needles and you all know what happens then. So. We'll see. My second whip is these mittens. This is the uh, something robots. The pattern is still unpublished. It's uh, written by my dear friend Krista. I was test knitting her the pattern earlier in the year, or basically last year, and um, then I just thought, okay, I'll make another pair, pair uh, of these mittens. So uh, I'm working on it. Doesn't have a name just yet. The pattern. Uh, it's something robots. Uh, the mitten is too big for me. A friend of mine has said that uh, they might give this a home. So uh, I'm hoping, hopeful on that matter. Yeah, this is still unblocked. I've just done the one mitten. I have another mitten to go. I'm using uh, Osterman Step Classic in colors uh, 1023 and in 1003 and I'm holding yarn double and I have uh, 3.25 millimeter needles I started I cast it on this pre EIF I had this with me in Scotland in March and when I got back I had half a thumb to make and I made it the thumb you now last weekend because I just wanted some thumb to be done. Then I have the pile is a little unstable here. I have a pair of socks I'm working on. Um, yeah. This project bag I got from the Crinea Creations from Scotland, lovely. And this project bag was a uh, Cal Price from Toyn Um I have here a pair of socks. I'm knitting these to my goddaughter. Uh, this will be her St. Thomas Day socks and uh, since I forgot to measure her foot when they were here in July I'm making that afterthought, afterthought heel so I'm just needing a tube now and then when I go to Corpio 
at some point or if I meet her in October so then I'll uh, just put the heel in. The yarn is one of those we hand tied together, of course. It's a Regia Fobli sock yarn and I'm combining it with uh, Drops Fable. I did use this color for the um, my cousin's baby, it's uh, baby vertebrae and the, the um, apple fant. So yeah, I had a smidgen left, so I thought. And I actually like the contrast, it's very nice. This I've had with me on places, sort of like it's easy to knit because it doesn't make, take any uh, I don't need to focus on it at the moment, it's just plain stockinette, stockinette stitch, uh, knit and knit and knit and knit. I have uh, two and a half millimeter needles, knit bros, I'm magic looping, mm, I mean I don't like magic looping socks because I don't like making the heels, so if I'm putting in the afterthought heel then I don't have any against knitting them with magic loop. Then I have, I don't remember which project is in which bag, so I just take a bag and then I'm surprised. This is one of the bags I purchased from Langolinia. Uh, her husband has uh, a company where they uh, blow paint things and this is one of his, his creations. This is a mitten. Uh, I did show you something similar sometime last year, or very early this year, and uh, I frocked that. I cast it on four more stitches, and then I restarted, and now it's fitting. This is going to be mittens. This is a ref reflective yarn, as you might see, so it shines very nicely when the light, light catches it. And I'm using Novita Hohde. Yarn. and uh, it's 62% wool, 21% polyamide and 17% polyester and the polyester is the um, reflective reflective uh, fiber. Um, I have had some other reflective yarns as well previously but they are usually utterly and barely uh, acrylic and they are very thick. So when I saw this one I just thought yeah I want to make mittens out of that. And the pattern I'm using is a traditional Finnish pattern. It has been published in Moda in 2006 and uh, somebody had made uh, their own version of the pattern to their blog. I don't remember the address. But um, I have mittens that has been crocheted with this same uh, same uh, pattern. They were made by my great grandma's friend and gifted to me by my grandmother because I'm the only one very small hands in the family. So I love love this uh, pattern because of course it is one of those things that brings back memories of my great grandma and of my grandma. Of course, well my grandma is not late, but you know. It's, yeah, I like the pattern and I'm hoping to finish this <laughs> sometime, but it's so slow because every single one of these stitches is made with slip stitch, so it doesn't grow at all. It takes ages to crochet two centimeters and I'm currently here, so ages. This is the first mitten. I'm using four and a half millimeter needle or uh, hook. This is the hook I purchased from Carmelux. I have five three, uh, four and a half millimeter crochet hooks because uh, when it's done with slip stitches uh, you need to have very uh, pointy head of the hook for it to work otherwise it's just miserable. So this has the pointiest head. <laughs> Then on this 
project bag. This is also from Langolinia. I love the owl. Uh, there is my baby sophisticate jacket. This is the tenth one. Uh, another one of my cousins had a baby in September, late October, uh, not October, August, August, August. So um, there was the option that I would have been going to visit them last Friday. Uh, that didn't happen, so the sweater is still unfinished. Uh, my mother called in there and said, okay, you don't need to go to Helsinki that day. So then I just said, oh, yeah, I'm not go <laughs> coming on that day. But if I would have gone there, this would have been finished. Uh, this is Job's Big Merino. It used to be pink, pastel pink. And I didn't have any other yarn to make this uh, baby sophisticated jacket. So I just, well, I mean... I don't mind the pink yarn, I just dye it and it came gorgeous. It's sort of like greyish, bluish, it has greens and purples on it and the best of it, so this is the skein. best of it is that I have three more skeins of it. <laughs> Where's the last one? And uh, the jacket will take about two, just over, just under, and uh, so there might be some left. And the contrasting color is this. So this used to be then jeans blue. I dyed this to purple. And uh, there is just over one skein in this hank. I thought it would be better to light them together, so I just made an odd somewhere. But yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with the leftovers, but something nice will be done. The baby sophisticate pattern is my go to pattern when I'm making baby sweaters or baby cardigans. It's the free version. I've been thinking about buying the actual ones. This is the tenth of that I'm using of the pattern. And it is by... How oh, come I don't remember? Do I need to check? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm having completely blank. Blanks out. What is her name? Erika Luder is the designer of the uh, Hermione's, Every Her Hermione's Everyday Socks and uh, Nikilan, she's the designer of the uh, uh, New Bob Waterbury. Lyndon Dunn, yeah, Lyndon Dunn is the designer be behind the Baby Sophisticate Jacket. So uh, yeah, that's my 10th tenth, tenth Baby Sophisticate Jacket. And uh, it won't be last. I have 5mm needles on it this time. I've done it also with 5.5 and 6mm needles, but I like the fabric that the 5mm needles produce with the Jobs Big Merino, so I'm happy with that. Then I have in my Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Back, I have my birth gas on. So, uh, birth festival of yarn happened uh, three weeks ago when the previous episode came out, and uh, there was then a very unhappy event after the festival that uh, the arranger of the festival, so she had got some very nice yarn as a gift and the yarn had become misplaced. It was later than found, so happy ending there. But uh, a lot of the birth vendors and uh, goers decided to go with the birth cast on, and because I know quite a many of those people, so I wanted to join, join in the birth cast on, and I cast it on. 
Originally, I cast it on the Tin Can Knits um, Slice Shawl. But I didn't like how the colors were betraying themselves, how the yarn, yarns behaved themselves there. So I did frock it and went for this one. This is the nail is this um, Shake It Up Mystery Cow. Uh, so you might know her as Anna Johanna in Ravelry Designer. Uh, and her knits, uh, her nickname in the knitting world is Neolisti, which means a knitetist. And uh, she's very, very talented Finnish designer. She has been designing just over a year. And uh, this is her first mystery cow. Uh, this is my birth cast on because I am using two yarns from a birth seller and it is or those are these two this is the queen of pearls a yarn called palista it's superwash non mules merino four ply yarn 600 meters per 150 grams and the green one is Fountain of Youth, and the orange one is Grand Canyon. I purchased these yarns when I was in Glasgow a year and a half ago, so last year's summer. And uh, I had so much trouble deciding which colors I'm going to buy, but this combination was amazing. Uh, I'm using the green one as my color A and the orange one as my color B and then I have a purple one that I have as a color C. I'll come back to this yarn in a while. But yeah, um, this is gorgeous yarn. Amazing. Uh, I had or I would have had a few other options as well for the bird sellers. I had some rusty favorite yarn. Yarn and uh, I'm waiting uh, a shipment from the other world, the yarns, but the shipment ain't here just yet. And uh, I'm going to be putting those yarns to my Stephen West Mystery Cow. Yeah, the third and last yarn is this purple. Purple yarn is very rich, very dark purple. And um, this is Gita Book. 100% Merino Easy Care. Yuta Book being discontinued yarn. Uh, the couple who was running the company retired a few years ago. The colorway is Velvet Pilbury 117, died in February 2011. I purchased the yarn from uh, Rika Pika, which is uh, in Joroinen. It's Usually, I, I stop there every single time when I drive to Gobia because, I mean, it is a very nice yarn store. Um, I started to buy, or I jumped to buy a little late, so I'm working on my clue number six. Yeah, and uh, uh, I have, or I have, I am uh, three clues behind to the end half because I'm halfway through it. Clue number six. Um, so far, I'm loving it. It's going to be a nice size shawl. Uh, there are some lace, there are some uh, brioche, and the rest of it is um, garter stitch. Yeah, still no bacon. So, yeah. This is my currently most worked whip. I'm still wondering if I'm going to take this with me to Turku or if I'm going to take the Baby Sophisticate jacket. Because the Baby Sophisticate jacket would of course be that the instant gratification kind of pattern because it would be finished by the time I get back home. Nearly finished because I wouldn't be taking patterns with me. 
And my last weep lives in my Langolinia project bag in love with yarn. And this is the project I haven't been working on that much since the uh, previous time shown. It is the Sukka Finlandia warm up socks from last year uh, by Rumikaaramitsa Keväällä kerran. Okei, okay, siellä kerran. Once upon a time in spring or summer, I'm not sure, I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, it's on Novita Nalle yarn. This will be socks for myself. This uh, purple yarn here I have dyed myself. Or I have emptied a dye bath with it. Let's put those things. Let's let's call them what they are for sure or what they are for real. Uh, I have no idea what the pattern is. I probably have saved it to my computer or to my laptop, uh, to my tablet or my phone, but I don't remember which one. <laughs> uh, I was surprised because I thought I had this pattern on paper because I remember knitting this on a place where I would not have had uh, a possibility to um, recharge my phone. So I would have, I mean, I would have thought that I would have a written pattern but, uh, or paper pattern, but I haven't found it just yet. But yeah, these will be finished at some point. First of the needle, there's just four needles. Oh, there are two more needles here. Live and learn. Yeah, this will be finished. Maybe not by Christmas, but this will be finished. Yeah. That's all my current active whips. And as I said before, we are not talking about the blankets. I did some spinning. I finished this last Sunday. It still needs to be applied. It's uh, it's a fiber I purchased from uh, Sky Blue Pink Designs from Edinburgh Young Festival. It is a Shetland mix. That's all I can tell you because that's all I remember. Uh, she didn't have any bands on the fibers, or they were just very small. Uh, notes saying this is that fiber and that fiber. I have pictures somewhere, but this is a Shetland mix. I don't know yet what I'm going to make of it. We'll see because uh, the plying is usually where my yarns well, they don't go wrong, but usually I'm very happy with the single and then my ply, and then I'm not very happy with the yarn. So we'll see what happens, but this has to be applied because it's very, very thin. It's not even lace weight, most of it, so... Yeah. I haven't been, I haven't been spinning with my spindle. I would want to, but my shoulder is still so sore that I don't risk it. There were a few days at work I couldn't even lift my shoulder this much. And... Uh, most of the things I need at work are at this level or this level, so I need to be able to lift my arms all the way that I can use use all the materials I need. So, uh, yeah, probably spindle spinning is not the best thing for me. Um, as I said, I have some yarn coming from Otherworldly Yarns. Uh, another one is called Kimono, and another one is called The Dark Side of the Moon. They are both of blue colors and I can't wait for them to arrive. In the meanwhile, I did purchase some yarn last weekend. These are from uh, a local local uh, farmer, Annika, Dal uh, Annika Parvia from the Dal Court. And um, now let me think how it was. 
This is uh, a Gotland sheep. Uh, Gotland sheep is a Gotland is an island uh, by the Swedish coast. It's part of Sweden. Uh, I don't know many farmers who would have a Gotland sheep in Finland, but this is a uh, Gotland sheep. And this is the grey one. Then uh, this is a Gotland and Texels Texel sheep mix. It's bit. Um, it has a bit more halo and the white yarn. Um, she said also that she has few other uh, mixed breed uh, sheep, not just the Gotland sheep and Texel sheep, but she has. Um, and Dorset. Where is the Dorset? She had few other a uh, few other sheep as well. And their wool she is not selling or spinning uh, to yarn because um, it would be uh, a mix mixed breed and apparently the mixed breed wool doesn't sell that well. So um she told me that when she has uh, uh, when she has clipped uh, mm, sheared sheared yeah all the sheep um, she'll get in touch with me and I can get some of the wool to spin and I'm looking forward to it but these are locally to me produced wool. And uh, I'm still thinking if I'm going to dye these or if I'm going to use this as another colors. I'm not sure what I'm going to make of these, but these should combine very nicely with the natural dyed yarns that I purchased and I purchased uh, dyed. And I have some more white wool from another um, another farm close to me, so uh, uh, I should have enough for something bigger project. Uh, as I promised, I have a few books. Two of them are just available in Finnish. This is uh, one of them. So, uh, this has 10 different pattern writers and over th uh, 30 patterns. And it's Socks for Men. Suuri Suomalainen Toivesukokirja. And it has even three socks that are null binded. Um, some of these socks are not very specifically men's socks. Of course, they have been written for thicker yarn and for bigger amount of stitches. But then, because they quite often use a quite thick yarn, so when you take um, a thinner yarn, uh, you can get smaller socks out of them. And uh, there is one pair of socks I so want to make. There is it. Yeah. Uh, so Lumikaramitsa is a Finnish uh, knitter who does a, a designer who does a lot of stranded knitting patterns. And on her first book, there was a um, a pair of mittens called Jesus, written as in Jesus, and that had the uh, face, and then on the uh, palm side it had a disket. You remember those? And it says Jesus saves, and. Uh, so this has it on the bottom of the foot. Um, I'm sort of like thinking if my card sons, uh, card sons humor, sense of humor <laughs> would tolerate those socks because I so want to make those. It's what well, size it has been written. It's actually rather small because it's on size 33 to 34, uh, 37, 38. What kind of man has that small feet? It's a boy socks. It's not a man socks. Well, it's made of yeah. Um, 
I think it's a proper proper yarn you could get easily. Size 40 socks out of it, so yeah. But I want to make those socks. This is so cool, just so funny. Uh, there have a few others very nice socks on this. Um, it was uh, I wasn't aware who all this who all designers had been um, contribu contributing to this um, book, and when I was just glancing through it, okay, that's hers and that's hers, that's hers, that's hers, that's hers. That's hers. So it was very easy to say which designers, which designers had then participated to this book. They all have very distinguished um, pattern writing type or pattern design type. There are even very simple, very simple patterns here as well. Um, so yeah. I have to say that these socks, no, 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 they are, uh, there are four different colors in one row, they're going to be so thick. Especially because it's done of uh, sports weight yarn. So if you have four strands on each row, it's so thick that there are no shoes you can put those shocks in. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but well, this definitely is a very nice book, very funny book. And uh, they are very nice charts on many places. So um, if if you are adventurous, even if you don't know Finnish, so you'd probably because the charts are the charts are very clear. I'll look for something that I haven't just shown you. Result: the so charts are the charts are very clear. So you could knit socks just out of charts. Um, yeah, very nice book, and uh, I might be knitting a few of these socks for myself, self even. And then there are the needle binded, needle binded socks here as well. So it gives you step by step directions how to make, how to needle bind, because it's not a technique everyone can. Me included. I have few books. I have tried it, but I can say I, I can it. Yeah. Another one is this one. Puikkomaisterin sukkasirkus by Tina Carlo. This is her fourth book. Yeah. And uh, these are very, I would want to say funky <laughs> socks. Uh, they are very interesting. They all have very different constructions. This has uh, the bottom of the foot is knitted uh, in another direction than the rest of the sock. And they are many of them are so funny. These were uh, Sukka Finlandia socks as well last year. Um, her socks are they are not simple or easy. They are challenging socks and you need to be experienced knitter to make her socks. But for those experienced knitters, it's a very lovely book. Um, not all of her ideas are something I would knit, but it's very nice to see that somebody can think that much out of box to make sock patterns like that. So, uh, yeah. Um, I have other ones that I thought. This is also very funny. Very funny socks. So, yeah. 
Um, I don't think, or I have all of her three previous books as well, but I don't think I've never actually made any of her patterns. I've always thought, oh, okay, I would want to make that, but strand and knitting, it's not my favorite type of knitting. I can strand and knit, but yeah, as I said, it's not my favorite thing because I like to. I like to knit without having to think that much about the uh, gauche. So uh, I usually am a little too tight knitter, so uh, it's not very nice. But this book has socks started from every possible way. It has socks started from there and here and from the heel, went, from the heel, from the toe, from the cuff, I think even one or two socks. Some of them are started like these ones that you need first this and then you need that and then you need that and then you need that and then you have socks yeah it has very intriguing ideas if not patterns to conduct them yeah a lot the third book is uh this is available in norwegian i assume this will be translated to english as well um the designer Jorid Lindvik, so she is a Norwegian designer and this is the third book they have translated in Finnish. Um, this is the first Finnish book I have because the first book I have in English because it was cheaper to buy the English one than the uh, Norwegian one and the second book I have in Norwegian and this is now in Finnish. So this is Knits for Children and it has, um, I think it has 10, one, two. so um, it has themes and then she's uh, using that same theme to make a beanie and two size, sizes of mittens and then the socks. So there's the, uh, the penguin theme. Where is the main picture? Here. Yeah. So you can see there is penguin hat and there are penguin mittens. We are not seeing if the model is using any penguin socks. But then it tells how to make a penguin hat and just as penguin mittens uh, for the bigger and for the smaller hand. And then uh, a beanie and the socks. It has ponies, it has big machines, it has very basic uh, figures, it has things like uh, owls, steady bears, giraffes, and they are in various children's sizes. Which is very nice, of course, because, uh, I mean, it's not difficult to recount a pattern to be able to use some standard patterns for children, but then it is how big it's going to be and that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I like it. And I like that most of the patterns have been then uh, photographed on a child. So you can actually see how well or not well they are fitting. Yeah, that's about it. A few words about the cows. So the multiples cow. Let me go to back. I was needing this one. The multiples cow is running all the way till end of October. I have my project still to add there. I had my five shawls done and this is my tenth of the Baby Sophisticate jackets. So I will be adding this there. Uh, it had a surprise the gorgeous yarn by Kobe Woolworks. And um, you have until the last of October to post your post your pictures. The uh, Tin Can Knit Scowl that I started on beginning of August, August. So, uh, no, yes, beginning of September. Yeah, 
so um or something <laughs> uh, that will be running all the way till end of November uh, the Incarnates published a new book on Thursday it's called Strange Brew I have the ebook already and I have ordered the paper uh, paper copy actual copy of it and uh, I don't know if the uh, print or the um, ebook that is accompanied by the print book will be as a code or will it be delivered to me as an email because then I'll have two and I won't be needing to but I don't know how easy it would be to gift to give the other other copy then to somebody but uh, nevertheless so I can't wait to see all those interesting yokes that the strange brew concept will be bringing with it if you remember my naturally dyed um, sweater that I showed you in the previous three four five episodes <laughs> don't remember so it's made with the uh, strange brew concept uh, the four ply sport sport weight uh, stitches and uh, I actually used a pattern from the compass sweater minus the uh, color work yoke uh, I didn't want to make put in the color work because it would have been sort of like the looping color would have stand out enough I know that but then there would have been the problem if I would have had enough yarn uh, the sweater used 404 grams so 400 would have been enough but because I had miscalculated the fate and I had to make two, uh, two inches extra to the length so thus it took just over 400 grams but I'm very happy with the sweater and I'll probably be wearing it today because it's cold enough yeah um, I hope to hear uh, from you in the Ravelry group or here on YouTube and uh, to tell how, I, how you are and uh, if you have any specific needs you have been thinking to think and it's Cal or if you're still working on your multiple scale so uh, let's get in touch and uh, happy knitting everyone see you next time